Who doesn't love CR250s? No friend of mine, that's for sure. Two strokes rule, we all know that. I'm building five of these Honda CR250s and they're really cool, 95, 96 range, have five of these things. This one, we're gonna, we have some really good footage and I'm gonna talk about what it takes to rebuild these things right now. We got my buddy Brad at Parapros is gonna be assembling the engine on this thing. We'll walk you through it. Okay, Brad at Parapros has been building engines for a long time. Uh, I've known him for, shoot, 25 years or so. Uh, great guy in Southern California. It's nice to have somebody who can, you know, help out a lot in these cases. These cases have all been cleaned up by Sano Metal Finishing. He, he already got the bearings in, you know, froze the bearings, heated up the cases, and his transmission, we went through like double the transmissions to make these things uh, work out. And so we, we did a lot of that, and it, these older 95, 96 CR250s are really cool, but what we found is, you know, when you have nearly 30 year old bikes, these things wear out a lot of parts. So we had a lot of issues going on and when you when you're having transmission stuff you don't want to have to take these engines apart later with any of those types of issues brad's got the dowels we got all this stuff cleaned up really nice and we reused a lot of the pieces here um when we cleaned up the cases and we, basically uh, we're doing five of these bikes for those that don't know at one time and this one's one of the later ones and we kind of did four and five together at the end and these things needed some welding. Every one of them needed welding or some type of case fix in some way. We got new gaskets, uh, we got Kometic here, and our crank, what we did is rebuilt the crank. The We rebuilt the crank with uh, Andrew Langston's. Uh, he rebuilt the crank for us, and we did a couple different crank styles. We did the OEM crank with a tin can. This is a Pro-X crank that we put a Pro-X rod on. Um, so we got the Pro-X rod on there, which is really nice, high quality Japanese bearings. Brad likes to check everything. So we got everything sealing well when we're doing these things. Nice soft hammer and you can get these cases right back on. And a little bit of heat on that inner bearing race. We can use a piece of lead to the heat up the inside of the bearing. You can get that piece of lead hot and then put it through. Now you're gonna see this a bunch throughout the video, but spec bolt has bolts for this entire engine. And it's a nickel look, really cool look on these things. So. And Brad uses a gun to get a lot of these things down because he's you know, doing, going so fast, doing so many of these things. He's got a good feel for it. He has different settings on the gun, um, and then he'll always you know, usually check them by hand uh, when he's completed. Assembling one of these engines for Brad when it's all done is, shoot, not even an hour and a half, two-hour deal. Um, once everything's already ready to go, that's a big thing. So these, these gaskets will have some stuff that hangs out you're gonna get all that out of the way and then brad likes to make sure that the uh everything's spinning well you, you're all free everything's good um that clots has some assembly lube which is really nice uh very similar to a you know two-stroke oil if you had a little bit of that but you gonna be careful using too much so on startup it's not too difficult everything's good and clean that's important when you're doing these things you can actually get a really good shot of one of our welding marks there i got a good buddy dallas that's really good at welding um, and, and it wasn't cracked like all the way through, but we wanted to make sure that, uh, there was no issues there. So we got that one welded up nicely in the case there. And these older bikes, that stuff happens, unfortunately, and you got to patch them up. It's getting really hard to find parts and find parts for a good deal. This will probably be the last time I do some of these older Hondas anyway. We'll move on to something else after these. Power valve works off a little governor here. And uh, Brad's, Brad's, Brad's got this stuff memorized, kind of how everything goes. We like to use the, uh, if you got a shop manual or the online microfish, you can use a lot of those tools to help you as you're going when you're working on it. He's, here he's got the Kickstarter hooked up. And pretty simple deal as you go forth. Power valve governor going in. Just like so. That little arm going down to touch the power valve governor is what will actuate the power valve within the cylinder. We got our recluse clutch basket and all the internal pieces for the recluse, you know, from recluse. Really high end parts. Um, we could have used some of the stock pieces, but it was really nice. I work with recluse, so it was really nice to get some really high quality pieces in these things. And they give you a washer, a lock washer that when you go to put it on. And we use like a, a high thread locker on here. You want to use a high strength thread locker when you go to put it on. 
Motion Pro has some really cool tools that Brad uses a bunch of, and you can see it's, it's really helpful when you go and assemble these engines to have the nice tools like that. Air gun is nice, Ulachuga as we call them. And then Brad can bend that uh, washer around. And he uses a wood block to work on, but also you can see he even props up the engine in different places. So the sleeves are, these, these sleeves are custom to Recluse. And what they do, these sleeves protect the, the inner, the, you know, the, the basket, uh, the clutch will ride against those, the clutch plates will ride against those sleeves. And you can see, then you can just put your plates back in the order that they, they tell you. Recluse has really good instructions with all the different thicknesses and what order to put the plates. So you really wanna look at those instructions over and follow those as you're putting it together. So, just like so. Now the, re the torque drive has additional plates in stock. So we got all those in there, really nice fitment. And we got the little, we call it the top hat piece, the last piece that will ride against the pressure plate. And then they give you a, a different springs to run that are custom to the recluse setup. And as you can see, the, there's special washers that fit within those springs as well. So it's important to use those. We get our AFM uh, Kometic gasket, which is really nice, kind of metal with a foam cutting coating on it. We really like, like that really nice fit. You can see how nice the side case looks from Sano Metal Finishing, who uh, Cerakoted it and we vapor blast the center cases from them, but to give these trim pieces that look is really cool Get all new gaskets for the water pump Brad's so strong he can just punch that cover on pretty cool, huh? And these spec bolts again look really cool going around and you can see that one bolt has a little brass washer. That's a, that's a drain bolt for the water. Then we got our oil one as well. For an oil check. We got the recluse cover going on. And Brad's holding that thing centered. Okay, so here are the stator. This is really interesting. Uh, these older bikes, it's getting hard to you know find some electrical parts. This RM stator, they're out of Canada. Um, and they have uh, new stators for these things and top coil as well. So we did both of those on this bike and look like really quality components. So we got those on there and we cleaned up our flywheel. We actually vapor blasted that. That bolt there on the, for the counter shaft, we got a new one coming. So it's no problem. Uh, piston, we got the Wiseco piston, circlips. It's nice to get that one circlip in on the bench. And you get a feel for those circlips to where they sit down nicely. You want to be really fully opened up. If anybody's ever lost a circlip coming out, it's because it's just usually 99% of the time improper installation. So you want to make sure you get it well. And again, the assembly loop from Klotz works well a lot of places like this, anywhere critical. So we'll have it on the wrist pin bearing. And the circlip, as you can see, Brad likes to get it going right there and make sure it's fully seated. Again, again, assembly lube across the rings where it's gonna to touch the cylinder and uh, you can have a little bit in the cylinder as well. Here you can get a good look at how, how nice our cylinders came out. Tom Morgan's one that ported these and got everything specced out. Those numbers in the piston are from when he gets it uh, plated, uh, replated from Millennium. And he's got the power valve already all assembled. Unfortunately, I don't have that. I showed that in a previous Instagram video, assembling the power valve and some of those tips, but, and putting studs in, now all that kind of stuff. So we have all that stuff ready to go here. And Brad likes to get a little bit of uh, gasket seal. And that's like Yama Bond at the base right there so that it doesn't ever blow out front or back of the uh, base gasket. Those are little areas. And again, getting, getting some assembly lube in the cylinder. A lot easier putting this stuff on when it's on the bench than, than not, you know. Now right there, you're making sure that that arm is lined up perfectly with the power valve and the cylinder. I've seen guys bend those over the years and I can say that uh, years ago, like in the early 90s, like 92, 93, I think uh, we actually did one. I remember that. And uh, so you, it's a pain to get it fixed or get, buy a new arm or get that one welded. Uh, so you don't want to do that. So make sure you're lined up as that cylinder goes down onto there. Then you're going to snug up all these base nuts. And a lot of these guys, you know, you're welcome to torque these properly, but uh, usually just fully Good and you know, good and snug is, is great on those. You, the, the head nuts are much more critical to torque than the base ones. 
and that you're gonna torque those. There's different settings, so a bit 22 to 25 foot pounds. You can look up what's specific for your bike and uh, and get it get it set up. It's the same torque wrench that I have. It's about as old as, well, it's older than uh, any of my kids, which is really pretty cool, right? So here we're wrapping up the engine. Again, those covers look nice and having those trim pieces like that is really cool. Did the fi final settings on the power valve now that everything's together. We can get our power valve cover on. It's pretty awesome how well Brad works in this and it's hard to believe how quick he can go with these and you know tear down is uh, mo most of the work on this engine was done when it was all apart you know getting the cases done getting the bearings in the cases all those types of things that's all actually way more time consuming than than you might think so that's a look at it pretty nice isn't it there it is we got our v-force going in ready for the engine to go in the frame Oh, she's a beauty. You like that silver frame? Okay, so if you made it to the end of this video, that's pretty dang good. That means you're really dedicated to watching some cool two-stroke engine build. Brad did a great job, as you can see. Uh, thing came out really well. We've got our, you know, oil and coolant in here now. This thing's ready to fire up soon. We're working on some airbox stuff. We've got our FMF on here. Uh, got our pipe. And it takes an immense amount of parts to make these old project bikes. To build them out at this level, it's a lot of work, a lot of cost. And, uh, but it comes out pretty cool. So hopefully you enjoy it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. We'll see you later on the Tracker Trail.